Cindy? I'm ready for it. <laughs> hey, we are going in depth now about Rett syndrome in today's health report. It's as common as cystic fibrosis and muscular dystrophy, but not a lot of people have heard about it. Joining me now to talk about it, Dr. Jeffrey Newell and country music legend Clint Black. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Good morning. First of all, doctor, my question is to you. How is Rett syndrome diagnosed and exactly how does a person know um, if their child, primarily a female child, is born with it? Yeah, that's a great question. So at Texas Children's Hospital, we see a lot of children with Rett syndrome and mostly the way that they're identified is that they were developing normally and then about a year or two old, years old, they lose the ability to talk and they lose the ability to use their hands and start developing a repetitive hand wringing or hand clapping movements. They also have trouble walking. As time progresses, they have a number of other problems such as autistic features, they, have, they might have seizures and a variety of movement problems and eventually they may look like they have Parkinson's disease. So it is one of the most severe autism spectrum disorders, right? Absolutely. And Clint, what is your role in this? How did you get involved in raising awareness and, and raising funds for this uh, syndrome? Well, it came to my family. My niece, Courtney, my brother Kevin's daughter, was diagnosed and mm -hmm. lost her battle to it at age 16. And shortly thereafter, my brother Kevin started to get involved with the fundraising. And uh, so I started pitching in literally with a, a, a pitching wedge on the golf course and the golf tournaments. <laughs> and uh, since then, we've held an event uh, each year down in the Houston area. This year, uh, starting on the 21st, we'll have a weekend of activities a uh, golf tournament, a fishing tournament down at Galveston Bay. Uh, there'll be a walk-a-thon and uh, uh, all uh, finishing with uh, uh, a concert we'll be having with uh, a few members of the family getting up there uh, to join in. And, uh, you know, we've, we've been able to raise a substantial amount of money there each year. And uh, with the help of my uh, buddy Scott Hamilton, uh, you know, who got us a matching grant from the Pioneer Fund, uh, mm -hmm. matching up to a million dollars. We we were able to clear that and go beyond to even raise money for the PSAs to help us get awareness uh, of this because, uh, you know, so many cases go undiagnosed right. and uh, families don't know what they're dealing with. And I can tell you from experience that, uh, you know, that's, that's uh, the first part of the battle and a critical part uh, to understand what you're dealing with. Uh, and then the stress on the family is so great uh, and tremendous that, uh, you know, as soon as you can know what you're facing and start getting help, getting treatments, and hopefully someday a cure, uh, then, uh, then it's a good thing. It's especially troubling because it's non-hereditary. Um, there are no known risk factors, although it doesn't occur typically more than once in a family. So it seems to me that more research, you know, needs to be done on this syndrome, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the, you know, the, the research is, is bringing great hope the doctor can speak more accurately to. Uh, I believe it's a matter of research hours. It's, mm -hmm. it's uh, man hours away, as they say. Uh, uh, they've been able to uh, reverse it in, in animals and uh, you know, then, you know, doing so in humans has to be just around the corner. All right. Thank you both so much for being with us this morning. If you want more information about um, Rett syndrome, you can go to rettsyndrome.org. Katie? Well, Cindy, 945.